Today, I'm gonna to be checking out a new guitar. It's called a Tajima, and a Tajima guitar is a guitar that sounds very Japanese, but they are built in Brazil, are made in Brazil. They do have an Asian import line, but that's not what we're checking out today. This guitar I bought off Reverb. I bought it new from a dealer, and uh, I sent him an offer. He accepted it, so we'll talk about that, and let's see what comes with the guitar. I'm not even sure if it comes with a gig bag. It didn't state in the, the sales site or the should say the the reverb auction if that's what you call it and what i'll do is go ahead set it flat lift it straight up so it doesn't come with a gig bag whoops so it doesn't come with a gig bag um it comes with a little box though that says tajima and in here is Certificate of Authenticity. It says it was built with the best technology and the whole Tajima Brazilian factory handmade tradition. By using woods and selected hardwares, each instrument has a rigorous quality control, creating a unique experience that only Tajima Brazil can provide. And then it has a owner's manual. And uh, obviously they sell acoustics because there's a lot of stuff in here about acoustics, truss rod adjustments, adjusting the tremolo. So it's pretty in-depth in-depth uh, user manual. Very nice. And a bunch of silicone packs. Uh, it looks like a Allen wrench for adjustment. And that's what's in that box. It's a pretty large box, but I think it was had to do with kind of filling out the, the uh, guitar. Wow. <laughs> All right. This is nice. It's out of tune, but man, feels good right off the bat, just the way the neck feels. Um, so what do we have? Well, it's a little, the body's light and the neck's kind of heavy. So it's not top heavy and I'm sure it's gonna be improved. Yeah, definitely improved once you kind of put the strap with this extended bout right here. So what do we have? This is a Jet Blues by Tajima. This is handmade in Brazil and a, obviously a metallic green finish. Two humbuckers, no coil splits, three-way switch with a Tone Pro style bridge, semi-hollow, of course. The guitar has a very, obviously, Fender vibe, a, definitely a Fano kind of a vibe going on. Uh, this headstock definitely has that Fano look, or some of you guys remember the old Fenders that had this headstock look. Very cool. We need to tune it up. I love the idea of this guitar. The first thing I like to do when I get a new guitar is play every single note on the fretboard to see if there's any high frets, low frets, dead spots, anything that's going to make the guitar uh, unplayable or having a playing issue. No dead spots on the frets, everything feels really good. Sometimes I like to take my finger and brush over the top of all the screws to see if there's any barbs on them. And that usually tells me, especially if a guitar is used, if somebody's used the wrong tools to, to do this. Uh, and I already found right here, there's two barbs, one on each side. Obviously it looks like somebody used a tool here and didn't have the right thickness to turn that. This guitar was sent to me brand new from a shop. So it's possible a technician did this uh, doing a quick setup. Here's a little trick for all of you. These slots on these posts are really thick and most screwdrivers, flathead screwdrivers don't fit them. So you can use a coin, but more importantly, make sure you take the time to loosen the strings and turn these by hand. You shouldn't need a lot of force to turn these. 
And what I'm checking now is the first fret where what I'm doing is I'm using my uh, ring finger like a capo. I'm gonna go ahead and push down on the third fret using my pointer finger. I'm just pushing down on the string at the first fret to see if I can push the string down. If I can push the string down, uh, that means the nut is cut too shallow. There's too much space there. If it's laying right on the fret or pretty much on the fret, that's what we want. Um, so the nut is cut perfectly. Another thing that's really interesting, especially about the Brazil made ones, is they're using a lot of woods that are indigenous to their area. They're not using traditional woods. The body is made of cedar, which is not uh, totally uncommon, but not typically used in electric guitars. The neck is made of marfim and are sometimes called pow marfim, and it looks just like maple. The fretboard is made of pow ferro, which is like rosewood, but a little harder and becoming real common on guitars. <laughs> that weren't really clear on their website I thought would really be nice to clear up here in this video. First is the frets definitely feel like medium jumbos to jumbos. Uh, I'm gonna say these are medium jumbos for sure. So it doesn't say what radius it is, but looking at it with the radius gauge right now, I'm going to say it's a nine and a half. Let's go ahead and look at the scale length. Again, something I couldn't find readily available on their website or on the place where I bought it. 25 and a half inch. If you notice what I'm doing, I'm just measuring from the inside of the nut to the saddle on the bridge. The website also states that they're using their Tajima pickups, which are uh, Alnico 5. <laughs> I always thought it was fun to try out something a little bit more, let's say exotic. Um, these guitars are priced pretty friendly. They're all sub $1,000 for the most part of what I saw. And some you can find deals as low as $600 on this particular model or models like this. But keep in mind, there's three different kinds of Tajima. There's like a premium line. There's this line, which is made in Brazil, but kind of midline. And then of course there's the Asian import line. And so far everything I've played on all three tiers have been pretty fantastic. Even the lower price stuff seems to impress more so than the mid range and the higher end stuff. So keep that in mind. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for spending some time with me today, checking out this stuff. And uh, until next time, thank you for your time and know your gear.